Okay, we're at the beginning of the lecture now where we just simply discussed how we're going to run the course, which is basically me giving a short lecture on the material that's contained in my notes. So we're in section 1.1 angle and rotations. We'll cover this. And again, there's going to be, you know, quite a few pages to get through, but we'll get through it. All right. Certainly this stuff is all written down for you. There's really no need for you to take notes verbatim because they're written down for you, but you may take some side notes. And I would recommend you have the document printed out. And by that on piece of paper where you could actually write in the paper that are directly on top of the notes. Or if you have a, um, um, a, a tablet, use the tablet to write directly on the PDF document, which you'll see me do. All right, you'll see me write directly on this document here. But we'll go through this, we'll go through, you know, angles, rotations, we'll talk about circles, we'll talk about definitions, we'll talk about measuring systems, we'll get through it though. It's dry for some students though. And what do you mean by dry? They say, why am I doing this? Well, you're doing this basically, so once we're done with this, you may not understand it completely, but once we're done with this, you'll be able to get to the section where questions are going to be asked of you. All right, now what kind of questions and examples? We do lecture first, then we do examples. This may go too fast for you. If it does, all I can say is, you need to watch these things at the end of the week. Or if you prefer, what you can do is watch the embedded videos. The advantage of watching an embedded video, by the way, is that you can watch the embedded video and pause it. Let me just give you an example of that. So over here, if you click on this over here, a video is gonna open up discussing this section of the notes. If you go to this section of the notes, if you click on this link here, a little video on that section of the notes is gonna happen, so forth and so on. This is also true for the examples. I'm gonna switch screens now though. I'm gonna switch screens to the whiteboard and just give me a moment to do so. And you see my whiteboard now. So as I do the whiteboard, my, my impression of this over here is certainly, you know, we would love for you to be able to read and understand what you've read, but a lot of times it's basically a show and tell of what, what I've written down in my notes over here. So, you know, I'm gonna talk about the first, two, first thing over here. And the first thing you say is an angle is the union of two rays. So if, if I were to send the union of two rays, it goes on to say that I have a common endpoint called the vertex. So let me give you an idea what two rays look like to me with a common endpoint, maybe a ray like this, a ray is a half line and they have a common endpoint and it'd be another ray like this over here. All right, so there's two rays there. So what do they say? They say an angle is the union of two rays with a common endpoint. So somebody, I wonder what the angle is. Well, the angle could be this here, believe it or not, that could be the angle or this thing over here. There's two separate angles there, all right? Now by my mind, someone says, I wonder what angle that is. Not important. What's important is you have two rays that form an angle. And what could that angle be? Well, it could be something, all right? So I wanna keep reading it to you. And someone says, you know, can I read that too? Of course you can, all right? So it says often here that, you know, that, that something about a rotation and something about sides, all right? So let me read this to you. It says, the initial ray, right? The initial ray is positional on the positive x-axis. Now they're talking about an x-y axis now. So we put that down for you. This would be the y-axis. And this will be the x-axis. All right. By the way, the y-axis is also called an ordinate and the x-axis is called an abscissa. It's probably more appropriate to use the words ordinate and abscissa, but right now you're familiar with the x and y-axis. But again, the x-axis is an abscissa, the y-axis is an ordinate. What do they say? They say the initial side is positioned along the positive x-axis. Well, let me put that down. All right, there it is, that's the initial side. The terminal side is then something that's being rotated from the initial side. Let me put that down. All right, and go back over this with you. X-axis is abscissa, Y-axis is subordinate. This thing over here is the initial side, which is a ray. Vertex is at the origin. So on the positive x-axis. This terminal side is a rotation from this initial side. This is a terminal side and it's been rotated. All right, what's been rotated? Through an angle. 
some angle theta, we'll say. This is the Greek letter theta. All right. So they give me some words over here I should probably understand. You know, initial side, terminal side, a rotation. They also go on to say there's two types of rotations you could do. One is going to be a clockwise rotation, and the other one's going to be a counterclockwise rotation. A clockwise rotation is going to be a negative angle. A counterclockwise rotation is a positive angle. This is what's known as standard position, right? What we have to get to is a measure of the thetas that you should be familiar with. And we're going to go through that now, right? The big one that you should be familiar with for thetas is going to be what's known as a rotation or the degree measure. Let me push this aside. So you should be familiar with this point, what a rotation is. And what are we rotating? Sorry about that. We're rotating the terminal side. I want to point out it starts at the initial side, which is the positive x axis, and we either rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise. So we're rotating the terminal side. You should be familiar with the rotation. Like if I did one rotation, of that terminal side, you should realize I'm back on the initial side. Let me go through that with you. So this will be the initial side. If I took the terminal side and I rotated it, one rotation, I'd be back over here. What's the angle there? Theta is one rotation. Some people prefer to use the word one revolution. That's fine too, right? You should also be familiar with Degree measure, right? You should be familiar with degree measure. So I'm gonna say degree measure is also familiar to most people at a very early stage of your life. So one rotation is really the same thing as 360 degrees. By the way, I wanna warn you about something. The number one is not equal to 360. This is not true. However, one rotation is identical to 360 degrees. That's an important fact. All right, we're gonna to go to the next page. The next page has to do with radian measure. And we'll talk about it. All right, we're gonna to go to the next page. We're gonna to go to the next page. Now, the, the way the radian's defined is an angle, uh, you know, I'll put this down for you that, uh, let me write this over here and I'll, I'll put some letters down for you. So um, I'm gonna write down the letter S is the arc length. We'll talk about what that looks like in the picture. R is the radius. I think you probably know we're talking about a circle at this point. And theta is the rotational angle in standard position. It's going to be the angle. All right. We're going to define a new measuring system called the radian measure. All right. Let's look at our picture first, though. And the picture, what I see is I definitely see a circle. Let me blow this up for you. I see a circle over here. All right. Now, what am I seeing in the circle? I'm seeing the initial side. And I'm seeing a terminal side over here. All right, I'm going to go through this. This here is the arc length. That's S. This here is the radius, R. All right. What do I notice looking at the picture? S appears to be the same length as R. This is the defining feature of the angle theta, and we're going to define this to be one. Now, someone says one what? A lot of people say radian, but we like to just say the number one. However, this is the defining feature of radian. Let's go back to that defining feature. Let's go back over here. Defining feature. All right, let's write this down. Theta.
is going to be S divided by R. All right. We just did one tiny example of an angle that was equal to one. And what does that mean? S would have to equal R. So if theta is equal to one, that implies that S is equal to R. However, I wanna to emphasize to you that S and R have a unit. What do I mean by that? There's a measure to it. It could be meters, it could be inches. They should be in the same unit. Theta is unitless. So for example, if S was one meter and R were two meters, the question is what's theta gonna be? Let's write this down. Theta would be equal to S, which is one meter over two meter, which is gonna be one half. Now one half what? Radian. So this is the defining feature of the radian measure. This is the measure we wanna be able to use. All right, we need to get an equivalence, like how's radian related to degrees and revolutions. Let's take a look at our picture again. So I'm gonna stay over here, just looking at it. I'm gonna say this roughly looks to me, and when I wanna say rough, I'm not saying it's accurate. I'm just saying it's rough. It roughly looks about 60 degrees or about one sixth of a rotation or a revolution. We don't want rough, we want exact. Let's go back. All right, let's go back to this. All right, in grade school, you were told that the circumference of a circle, I'll write this one over here, was two pi r. Now, what does that mean? That means we want one surround on the circle. It's the whole way around. So what does it mean? That's what S is. So let's talk about what the theta would look like here. Theta would look like S, well, what's S? Two pi r over the radius, which is gonna be two pi. So what do I now know? I know once around this is two pi. I'm gonna write that down for you now. And this is gonna be like the really important part of here. So 360 degrees, that's once around, is the same thing as one rotation, is the same thing as one revolution, and is the same thing as two pi. Okay, let me point this out. There's a unit there, the unit's gonna be degrees. There's a unit there, it's rotation. There's a unit there, it's revolution. This has no unit on it. That makes it really convenient for mathematics. But the bottom line, I would never claim that 360 is equal to two pi. However, this is not true. I would claim that 360 degrees is equal to two pi. I would claim that. I would also claim that 360 degrees is equal to one rotation or one revolution. This is gonna be really important. You need to know this. You need to know this. All right, let's go back to the notes and let's talk about why you need to know that. What you need to do is go back and forth between the radius systems. And what we're gonna do that is we're gonna use what's called a unit conversion factor. Unit conversion factor. What does that mean? It's the number one. So what am I claiming over here? I'm claiming that two pi is the same thing as 360 degrees but I want the number one. So what you could do is divide both sides by two pi. And if you did that, what would you get? One equals 180 degrees over pi. All right, let me point out where that is, right over here. That's the number one. 180 degrees divided by pi is number one. Let me tell you again, 180 divided by pi is not equal to one. That's just crazy. It's not equal to one. All right, let me erase that for you. All right, let me keep going. What else could you do? Well, let me write this one down. You could take two pi equals 360 degrees and divide both sides by 360 degrees. What would you give it there? Pi over 180 degrees is equal to one. That's written here. All right, let's talk about revolutions. Two pi is equal to one rev or rotation what could I do there? Well, I could divide both sides by two pi if I wanted. 
2 pi divided by 2 pi is 1. We want the 1. What would I get? 1 rev over 2 pi. Let me point out where that is. That's right here. We could do another one. 2 pi equals 1 rev. Divide both sides by 1 rev. And what do we get? Well, 1 rev divided by 1 rev is 1. 2 pi over 1 rev. All right? So important, those unit conversion factors. Now, why do we want that? Well, we need to work back and forth between different systems. And the system you really want to go towards is towards radians. So for example, if I have 90 degrees and someone says, what's the radian measure for that? Well, I'd say, I'm going to multiply by the unit conversion factor. Well, what's one times 90 degrees? 90 degrees. But what I want to do is find a, an equivalence of one that's going to remove the degree symbol. And what's that going to be? Pi over 180 degrees. What's the unit that cancels? The degree would cancel. What are you left off with? Well, if you reduce that with grade school arithmetic, you get pi over two. All right, let's say you took 45 degrees and you wanted to convert that to another measuring system. Well, one times 45 degrees is still 45 degrees. Well, what'd you do over there? Pi over 180 degrees. And what unit cancels off over there? Degrees. What'd you be left off with? Pi, 45 goes into 180 four times. You should have some basic arithmetic skills. All right, let's say you took, I don't know, 120 degrees times one. It's still 120 degrees, right? What's another conversion factor? I'm sorry, a, a unit conversion factor. Well, pi over 180 again works beautifully. What's the unit that cancels there? Degrees. What do you get? Well, it might be a little tricky for you. I certainly get pi. Some people say it's a multiple pi, and it is. I'm going to say it's divided by 60, so two thirds. Yes, you have to be able to do that. All right, let's take another example. I'm going to take 5 pi over 6. I want to tell you, there's no unit on that. Pi is a number. There's no unit. If I multiply it by 1, I'm still going to get 5 pi over 6. What's another unit conversion factor? Well, I could use the 180 degrees now over pi. Well, no unit cancels there, but what does cancel? is pi. And six goes into 180, 30 degree times. And 30 times five is 150. All right, let me repeat this. We're using a unit conversion factor. We need to know that. What's the sacred cow again? Let me write this down. One rev is identical to 360 degrees is identical to 2 pi. What's new to you? The radian measure. We need to go back and forth between the two. And we'll have plenty of examples to do that. All right. Let me go to the next page. And we're going to talk about something that some students find very difficult. I want to claim, though, the difficulty comes in having, uh, you know, not a firm understanding of basic knowledge. And so what they're talking about is they're talking about special triangles. And yeah, so I'm not, gonna, I'm not a great artist, but I'll, I'll draw, not a triangle, but I'm going to draw a square down for you. And not a great looking square, but I say it's a square. What are the angles over here? Well, they're 90 degree angles. And what I'm going to do with that square, I'm going to label the sides to be one unit length. All right, that's a one unit length. And all the angles in that square are 90 degrees. And then what I'm going to do to form a triangle, because there's going to be two special triangles. I'm going to chop it in half. Now, someone says, if you chopped in half, what would it look like? Well, I'm going to get my eraser out and show you that I'm going to get something that looks like a triangle to me. What kind of triangle is that? That's a right triangle. Let me make this a solid side now. All right, so put the angles over here. Now, I chopped the 90 in half, right? So what do you get? 45 and 45 over here. You should know the Pythagorean theorem for right triangles. It was introduced to you in Math 100, and certainly uh, you've seen that in Math 119 as well. And I'll do that for a generic right triangle. I'll just put this down over here for you, a generic one, A, B, C. What do we know? A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Well, that's an important fact. So that's an important fact. Let's do it in this one over here. I'll call this A, I'll call this B, and I'll call this C. My objective is to find C. C is a positive number though. Hope you realize that triangle, right? So what do you get? A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. What's A squared? One. What's B squared? One. 
Uh, C squared, I have no idea. That's going to be two equals C squared. Well, C is a positive number. C would have to be the root of two. So what's C? Square root of two. All right. I'm going to write this a little bit differently. And the reason for that is I want to scale the triangle. So the hypotenuse is one. So I'm going to divide all the sides by the square root of two. And we would get a very, very standard triangle. This is a special triangle. Let me put that over here for you. Forty-five, forty-five, and again we're scaling it. Every side is divided by root two. We would get one, one over root two, one over root two. All right, this thing needs to be known. I'm hoping you understand what I did there. I really hope for that. I do want to claim though, a lot of students they get confused when teachers demand that this gets rewritten. I don't demand it. But in Math 100, they demanded that you wrote this a little bit differently, root two over two. So I'm gonna claim over here, I actually prefer to write one over root two down. Other people prefer to write down root two over two. Your mileage may vary. You do what you wanna do. Well, let's do the next one. And again, we'll get back to these things over here. I'm just going through the notes, paraphrasing. The next one's gonna be an equilateral triangle. And I'm, again, I'm not claiming I'm a great artist over here. I'm claiming that's, it's, it's my abstraction of an equilateral. If it's equilateral, I'll say all the angles are also equal angular and have to be 60 degrees then. All right, I'm gonna make the lengths of the side two and I still wanna get a right triangle of this. So I'm gonna chop it in half. I'm gonna make my erasure now. And as I do that, um, I have to change this picture a little bit. So I'm gonna say this gets erased. I wanna get my triangle here. Well, I chopped the two and a half, that gets erased, becomes a one, and the 60 gets erased. I chopped it in half, it becomes 30 now. So this is 30, and this is one, put my side in over here. This is what's known as a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. All right, I'm gonna call this A. I'm gonna call this B, I don't know what that is yet. I'm gonna call this C. Well, Pythagorean theorem again, A squared, which is one, plus B squared, I have no idea. And C squared, well, two squared is four, right? So what's B squared? It's three. Before I go on, though, I wanna make sure you know it's a right triangle and it's physical, so the B has to be greater than zero. So what's the B gonna be? Root three. I'll get my eraser out and I'll put root three. We're hoping you can understand and follow what we just did. I still wanna unitize the hypotenuse, this hypotenuse. How do I do that? Divide all the sides by two. I draw a picture of that. I'm not saying it's the best picture in the world, but enough for me. Now, I'm not of the opinion you should memorize this, but you should probably understand it. This is one. I'm dividing by two though. So it's one over two. This was root three, but I'm dividing by, whoops, sorry about that. I'm dividing by two. And this side over here, the hypotenuse was two and I divide by two would be one. This thing needs to be known. Now, why does it need to be known? They're going to start asking you questions about this picture over here. I know it's tough. I want to tell you what this picture is. It is a unit circle. This picture here is a unit circle picture. Now, a lot of textbooks, what they do is they just talk about what's called a unit circle approach. Sorry about that. A unit circle approach Whoops, push that out. I'm gonna talk about really easy points on this particular circle. This is a unit circle. Centered, by the way, unit circle means radius one at origin. All right, I'm looking at it. I, I, I see the circle. I see it's centered at the origin. I see the x-axis. I see the y-axis and it's a unit circle. So I'm gonna say this point over here, that's as obvious as it can be. It's, it's gotta be one comma zero, something you did in math 100. What's this point over here? Zero one. What's this point over here? Minus one zero, that's easy. What's this point over here? Zero minus one. 
Now let's talk about the angles here. What's the angle associated with that point? Well, theta hasn't, the terminal side has not been moved. So I'm gonna say zero degrees. What's the angle over here? Well, I'm hoping you're starting to realize it's a quarter of a revolution or 90 degrees. Well, what's the angle over here? Well, looking at it, the theta, what is 180 degrees? This is also laid in your diagram, by the way. What's the one over here? Theta is 270 degrees. How many points are on this unit circle? 16 points. All right, how many, if I've done four, I gotta do 16 more. And I wanna go through them with you. All right, some teachers claim that students need to memorize this. I think that's outrageous. You don't need to memorize anything. You need to understand. So I can take a look at this over here again. I'm gonna start going through it again. I'm gonna take this one over here. I don't know, pull it on the side here. And I get rid of this over here, not too far away. And I'm gonna talk about some of the points. I'll talk about this one now, this one, this one, and this one. Now, since why do you pick those? I see a tremendous amount of symmetry. It's tremendous. If you look at the point, what are you seeing? This point here and this point here is just a reflection about the x-axis. Well, it is. And what's this point over here? It's a reflection about, I'm sorry, the other one I said, reflection about the y-axis. This reflect about the x-axis and this is also a reflection about the x-axis. All right, let me point that out again to you. This point here reflected across the y-axis would be this point over here. This point here reflected about the y-axis, I'm sorry, x-axis would be this point over here. This point here reflected about the x-axis would be this point over here. Now someone says, do I need to memorize that point? No, you need to see the triangle. I'm gonna put that point down for you now, the triangle here. This is a triangle we just did. What's the angle over here? 30 degrees. What's this angle over here? 60, and this is a right triangle. Did we do the sides of that? Yes, that's one. Hope you remember we did that. It's a unit circle. This is a half, and this is root three over two. So I am hoping when you look at that, you know the X coordinate for that is root three over two, and the y coordinate for that is one half. These ones follow from that argument, All right? How many points have we done so far? We've done eight points. We have eight more points to do. Let's do another one. And I'll take a little picture over here. Whoops, I realized my pictures are getting uh, all screwed up here. And let me get this over here. Sorry about that, it happens sometimes. I, I get screwed up with this. Let's copy this here. Pull it aside, push this up, get, get rid of this thing over here. Uh, pull this, let's get this, get this over here, pull this down. All right, let's do another one. All right, let's take a look at it. And I'm gonna do this one over here now. And I'm looking at points. I really want to look at it, see if I can, I can see some symmetry here. I hope you're looking at that. I'm, I'm just looking at symmetry. Stuff that you studied in Math 119. And let's see. All right, how many points? I got four points there, right? So what do I notice about those points? And I, I, I want to emphasize there's just some symmetry. That's why I'm using the points. This point here being reflected about the y-axis would be that point there, right? Stuff you studied in Math 119. This point here reflected through the x-axis would be this point over here. Relatively simple, by the way. This point over here reflected through the x-axis would be this point over here. Question is, how'd they get that point? Well, they looked at a triangle and I'll put that down for you. The radius is still one 
right triangle. What's this thing over here? 60 degrees. What are the sides here? Well, radius one, this would be root three over two, and this would be one half. So what's the X coordinate? One half, what's the Y coordinate? Root three over two. Follows for all the other points as well. Should be relatively simple. We're looking at reference triangles. I use the word reference a lot. They're referring to those triangles, all right? We have, let's see, we did 12 points. We have four more to go. Let's take a look. Sorry about that. Oh boy, you got it. It's over here. Let me pull it out. All right, let's take a look at the other the four points that we have not done yet. I know it's tough. I'm not saying it's easy for you. And let's take a look. I haven't done these points. Okay. All right, I'm looking at it and I've noticed your symmetry again, that this point here reflected over there would be that point as reflected about the y-axis. This point here reflected about the x-axis would be that point over there. This point here reflected the x-axis would be this point over here. Now, what do I notice about that? It has something to do with the triangle. So I'm gonna put that in for you. I'll go for green this time. And I'm gonna say, points about there. And what triangle is that? It's the 45 degree triangle. Radius is still one. These sides are one over root two, one over root two. Again, I'm not trying to confuse you, but one over root two, as we discussed before, is identical to root two over two. Most textbooks prefer what's called the rationalized denominator, and that's why they write that down. I actually prefer one of root two, but most books prefer root two over two. That's how we got these points over here. Okay, let's go to the next page. We're done with the picture. Yep, you need to know that picture. Yes, we'll go through other examples to make sure that picture is well understood. I'm not memorizing anything though. All right, let's go to the next page. Next page is gonna be the definitions of these circular functions. What circular function? We have a, a, a circle, I'll write this down for you centered at the origin, I'll put this over here. You know, my pictures are never good. There's gonna be a point over here. I'll tell you what the point is gonna be, X comma Y. There's gonna be a radius over here. That's the terminal side. These are in standard position. This will be the angle theta. All right, this is radius by the way. What relationships do I do know for this over here? It's a circle centered at the origin. What I do know is this. I know that X squared plus Y squared is equal to R squared. It's so important you know that fact, right? That really comes back from Math 100 about a circle centered at the origin. And it's certainly reinforced when you did 119. Now, of course, what are we doing? We're gonna define um, six separate functions that are functions of the angle theta in standard position. And let's write these functions down for you. The first function is defined as the sine of theta. And the sine of theta is defined as a ratio of the ordinate, which is y, over the radius, which is r. The cosine of theta is defined as a function of theta, where it's gonna be the abscissa x over the uh, radius r. Then there's gonna be the tangent of theta that is defined as the ordinate y over the abscissa x, that's y. Then there's gonna be reciprocal functions that are related to these guys over here, and I'll write those down for you. The cosecant of theta right? That's a reciprocal. Reciprocal of who? Sine. What's a reciprocal of sine? R over Y. There'll be the secant of theta, and that's going to be R over X. And then there's going to be reciprocal of tangent, which is called cotangent of theta, which is going to be X over Y. Okay. All this stuff is written in your notes. Next up, here's what happens to some students. They get confused by the letters. 
letters can change. So for example, instead of calling the abscissa X, they may call the abscissa A, they may call the ordinate B, right? That's possible. And then the definitions are still gonna be the same. You still have a circle, still have a radius, you still have a point. What's the point now gonna be? X, not X, but it's gonna be A comma B. But the definitions don't change. So if we write down sine, let's call this theta again, sine of theta, what would it be? It's gonna be B now. B is the ordinate over the radius, so forth and so on. So really nothing's changed. All right, next up, we're gonna to go to examples. Here's the deal though. A lot of students are confused. They say, I don't know what, I, what you just did. I can't understand anything you've done. You've got to study. It's so important you study what we've done. Okay, we're gonna to try to reinforce what we just learned by going through the examples now. Let's take a, a short break, okay?